Praise the Lord and Happy New Year. We are so thankful to the Lord who has given us grace to enter the new year, the year of the Lord, 2024. This year definitely is a year that has got to be different from 2023. To many of you, the year 2023 was a difficult year. It was a year some of you would, have, would, would wish to be completely erased from the history of your life. It was a year of pain, it was the year of loss. Some of you lost your beloved ones, you lost your wife, you lost your husband, you lost your children, you lost a job, you are laid off, your business collapsed and everything else. But you see, the scripture tells us we must forget the past and forge forward for what God has for us. And today, I am beginning a new series. And this series is not just a product of too much thinking, but it's completely a product of what the Holy Spirit has spoken to me. And particularly when we had an overnight prayer, with the, and then the Lord spoke to me and he just reminded me of something that many of us are very much aware of. Almost every year when people are crossing into the new year, you move around in churches, in corporations, they will have a statement that describes the new year. Some have written the year of abundance. Some have said the year of breakthroughs. Some have, uh, have uh, called the year 2024 the year of expansion, the year of multiplication. You can call every name and you can make a declaration. And I'm not having any trouble with those declarations and those slogans that we have hung in our churches and in our in the buildings or in families. But I just want you to know this. These slogans have been there for so many years. And almost every year people come up with the slogan. The countries come up with slogans. You know, people come, organizations come up with slogans. But many of those organizations do not and may, will not in any way realize anything related to the slogan that they came up with. The slogan may sound so good. It may sound so real, but it will not be done. And I want to tell you why. Just like God says in, uh, I mean, the Apostle Paul writes in the Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, about the value of the word. And he says, the word that you and I receives from the Spirit, are receiving from the Spirit of God, that same word was spoken to the children of Israel in the wilderness, but the word did not benefit the children of Israel because they did not mingle it with faith. But today I want to tell you this. We can have great resolutions for the year 2024, the year 2024. But I can tell you, with all those declarations and resolutions, if you do not embrace this thing, and I'm calling it the value of planning. There is no way we can do anything if we are not people with a plan. And I'm going to show you that even God never did anything without a plan. But before I do that, let me just give you planning, the meaning of planning from management standpoint. Planning is a function of management that involves setting objectives and determining a cause of action for achieving those objectives. So that is, you sit down and you come up with objectives. What is that you want to, ob what, what are your objectives in the year 2024? But that having the objectives is not enough. You need to move even a step Father, you have got to determine the course of action that will, achieve, that will assure that you achieve those things. This almost gives us the scripture that, that the Apostle James, you know, wrote to us. And he says, show me your faith without action. 
And I will show you my faith with action. Faith without action is dead. If you have objectives without a set plan of action on how you are going to achieve those objectives, my friend, I can tell you that is a mirage. You are not going to achieve anything. And you will be very frustrated. You, you will start. This is what people have said in organizations. The CEOs have stood and told the directors, this is what we are planning to do. We will do this. And this year we will turn things like this. You can have those objectives. But what is the course of action that will enable you get those objectives? It is a very important thing. And this is where the the, the, the rapper hits the rod, the tarmac. If you don't have the cause of action, all those great objectives are hanging in the air. They will not hit the ground and produce results. I just want you to know that. Now, as we lay this foundation, I want you to understand this. That even God... In order for him to create man, he had a plan. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, what does he say? Let us now make man in our own image, after our own likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over everything that creeps, well, that, 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 is, uh, that moves on the face of the earth. And then God created them, male and female, he created them. And verse 28, and God blessed them and told them, multiply, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. So you see, God had a plan for the advent of a human being. Before a human being came onto planet Earth, God had a plan for him. What was the plan? The man that we are going to create shall be in our own image and after our own likeness. That is the image of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that the, the man that God is creating shall have dominion. He will have a domain over which he exercises his do, dominion. And this, was his, this is the domain that God created for him. This man shall rule over all the seas, over the waters. So the waters are the domain and territory of a human being that God is creating. And he will have dominion over all the fowls of the air. So we rule over this atmospheric space. It is our territory. It is our sphere of it, where we, it, we, we exert our influence as human beings. Then he said on earth and on everything that is on earth. God had a plan. And the Bible says, and he created them both, male and female. So in the original plan of God, a male person and a female person are created equal before God. And they were both blessed to be fruitful. They were both blessed to multiply. They were both blessed to replenish the earth and subdue it. So male and female, a woman and a man, are equal in the creation of God. The only place where God has lifted a man to be the head is in the family. And his headship in the family is to bless and minister to the household. It is not to tyrannize the family. That is what God has done. Because there is no function, there is no institution that doesn't have the sender of power. And so God, in his manifold wisdom, invested that power in the husband. So that is the only, the only place where a woman submits to the authority of a man because that man is a husband. She doesn't submit to all men. The Bible says women submit to your own husbands. 
not to the brother-in-law, not to this. I'm not saying that you don't you do you do disrespect your brothers in law, but please, in relating with them, let them know that you are under another authority. And the authority that you are under is the authority of your husband. So you see that the creation of a man, of mankind, so that you don't think a woman was not created, the creation of mankind, that's male and female, was a product of the plan of God. The God we serve is a God of plan. Look at even the plan of redemption. When Adam and Eve sinned against God and they devised their own way of covering their iniquity, their shame, their nakedness by getting twigs and leaves and covering themselves, God still did not approve it. He had to slaughter an animal on behalf of, the, of Adam and Eve so that by the loss of the life of that animal, Adam and Eve could be covered. So God had already introduced the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ, the substitute who died on the cross for us. In the story of Noah, Jesus becomes our becomes the ark in which we run for salvation. So Jesus is manifested as a symbol in the plan of God. And you can imagine 800 years before the coming of Jesus, Isaiah the prophet prophesied of a virgin conceiving and bearing a son whose name shall be called Emmanuel. And the name of the man, the name Emmanuel means God with us. So you see that salvation is not an act. It is not just a spontaneous happening. It is something that comes from the plan of God. The God we serve is a God of plan. And as a human being created by in the very image and likeness of God, brother and sister, this year 2024, you have got to sit down, husband and wife, father and children, and come up with a plan for your family. Come up with objectives and come up with a plan to achieve those objectives. Otherwise, you will have all those big slogans, those big declarations, and pastors and leaders, organizational chiefs and executives, thank you for the slogans. Thank you for, for the declarations you have come with for your for your organization principals of high schools thank you for the mean target that you have said oh 8.5 10.5 or 11.5 but my friend let me tell you you are not going to get it because you wrote on the wall and pinned it everywhere in the school 8.5 you must come back and sit down and come up with a plan that will assure that there is a course of action that will bring those results. If that is not there, you are not going to see it. For God to bring Adam back to the place, the generation of Adam back to himself, he had to come up with the plan of the Redeemer, his name Jesus Christ, who was born who was conceived by the miraculous power and was born in a manger and then he rose and grew up a sinless life and then he went on the cross. He paid the penalty of sin. He was buried on the, that day he rose again and he is now seated on the right hand side of God making intercession for us, making salvation possible for our people like ourselves. Friend, you need a plan. You are not going to live your life without planning and expect any breakthrough in your life. I just want to read this scripture. Proverbs 21 and verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. So it is not just about plans. You must also be diligent in following through coming up with a course of action for those plans. And when you do that, I can assure you, if your prophecy is that this is the year of abundance, you need a plan and be diligent in that plan and then you will see it come to pass. But any hasty shortcuts, 
If you just see people doing something and you also want to do it, pastor, you see another pastor doing a crusade and you also want to do a crusade to grow the ministry, my friend, those are short, hasty shortcuts. You are not doing what God has called you to do. Do what he has called you to do and come up with a plan on what you're going to do in order to accomplish what we have said. I wanted to take a little longer on this class so that you understand this. And I know, my friend, that you are going to come up with a plan for your resolutions, declarations, and slogans for this year. And I, I just want all of you, because this affects all, there are some of you young men who say this year is the year when you will marry. This is the year you, you want to get married. I want you to know this. It, that, just saying that statement is not enough. You must have a plan. You must have a plan. If you are going to marry as a man, you are bringing in on board another person. You are going to bring, you are building a new network of relatives called in-laws. You are going to, in that union of yours, union of yours between you and, you and the man you want to get married to or the woman you want to get married to, you are going to produce children. It is a responsibility. And even the process of the wedding, you need to pay for your marriage, marriage certificate. Where the pride price is required, you, may, you need to do that. So what are you, the cost of the wedding? You need to sit down and, and plan that's what I'm saying. The, the days of just saying, I have left everything in the hands of God. That is deception. It is not wisdom. It doesn't come from God. God did not create monkoloids. I mean, he did not create you as a zombie. He created you in his own image and after his own likeness. He wants you to do things, friend. You must wake up and do things. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you for your faithfulness and goodness. Thank you, Lord, that you love us with an everlasting love. And this day you have reminded us that you are a God of plan. And you are calling each one of us into coming up with a plan in order to achieve the goals and objectives that are from you. So, Lord, first of all, I pray that the plan that each one of us will come up with will be the plan that is born from the Spirit of God. We thank you, we bless you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To continue enjoying this spiritual nourishment, click on subscribe button below. Click on the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another video. Thank you and see you in our next broadcast.